Welcome to Wicked Gingerbread on this Fat Tuesday, Mardi Gras day. This has a, the, today has a special place in my heart because my one and only child, my son, Anthony, hi baby, <laughs> he moved to Louisiana several years ago. Uh, there's a, he lives with a, his girl and a wonderful family down there. Um, so today I'm dedicating this to Cajun inspired a uh, couple dishes. I am going to attempt to make gumbo. Uh, this is going to be shrimp and, and, and dually sausage. I'm going to uh, leave the chicken out because I make so many dishes with chicken, but you can use chicken. Um, I don't know if you can use beef, but you just kind of throw in there some different meats that you like. And then the second dish is air fried beignet. Now, of course, we all know Café de la Monde in New Orleans has the best beignets probably in the world, other than maybe France. So of this Tony Chicheris, I'm going to use about a tablespoon. About a tablespoon of cayenne, salt, garlic, or two tablespoons. Half tablespoon of thyme, generous helping of pepper. Okay, let me go ahead and get this stirred up. I think I'm actually going to try to go ahead and whisk it. Try to get the flour kind of It's the main thing. You don't want any clumps of the flour even though I think it's cooked. Okay. Now I'm also gonna add 12 ounces of okra. In this container, I have diced up one cup of green pepper, one cup of onion, one cup of celery. bay leaf and then the other container of low sodium chicken broth. So I'm going to, you want to put your meat in last. So I'm going to cook this for 20 minutes to incorporate everything and then and then I'm going to cook again for 10 more minutes. I'm going to chop up the, I have andouille chicken sausage. I'm going to put all four of them in, chop them up. And I also have one pound of deveined and peeled uh, shrimp. Tail on, I'm going to try to pull the tails off. So 20 minutes without the meat and then 10 minutes with the meat. Okay, pressure cook. Twenty minutes and then start in the instant pot of the gumbo base uh, cooked for 20 minutes and I have to tell you be very careful with using cayenne and the Tony's seasoning because I guess the Tony's seasoning um, has a little spice in it too I didn't realize it would be hot but I like spicy um, and this is I took a little taste and that's I think it's delicious you're going to serve this over rice. I'm going to serve it over brown rice. But first, we have to cook the meat. Look at that beautiful. So it's not brown, but I think it's like looks really nice. And I'm going to put about 
a teaspoon of the file in, and I chopped up all four of those andouille sausages. So I'm gonna go ahead and put those in. And I didn't take the tails off. Well, I guess we can just do that when we're eating them. But I have uh, one pound of raw shrimp. Do pressure cook again, but this time just for 10 minutes. And then we will serve this with some rice. So here's the big reveal of the gumbo. I cooked it for about 10 more minutes with uh, this. And now I'm gonna give it a stir and then I'll plate it. And I have some brown rice. I'm gonna serve it on the side of. This is more like a bowl. You serve this like a bowl. And I'm gonna put a little bit of green onion. And I'm gonna to top it with just a little bit of salt. Gumbo, and I don't know if you noticed, but I do have my Mardi Gras beads on. I am celebrating Mardi Gras. So give this a try. We're, this is what we're gonna have for dinner. Like a bird on a tree I'm just sitting here so the first thing you're going to need to do is get some active yeast. I have three-fourths of a cup of lukewarm water, not hot, lukewarm. I just put it in the microwave for like 20 seconds and then let it cool for a second. Three-fourths, make sure you're measuring this, three-fourths of a cup. And then I'm getting having a healthy, a generous teaspoon of the yeast. So just a little, like, no. I don't know if it's half the packet. So I'm just going to go ahead and put that in the water. And then you want just a pinch of sugar. I'm using organic coconut sugar, so I hope that works. But the sugar just seems to kind of activate the yeast. And then I'm going to just give it a stir. And you want it to be kind of frothy. And it's kind of turning a instantly kind of white. So that's step one. Okay, so now that you have the yeast and it's all foamy, it's ready to go and set aside, we're gonna go ahead now, if you can, try to have this dough sit covered in your fridge overnight, but you, or keep it in a warm place for at least two hours. So even though this is an air fryer, a little bit lighter recipe, um, still you're dealing with yeast and you're gonna have to let it rise. So I'm gonna finish this video tomorrow, um, but for now I'm gonna show you how to get the dough ready. Now it's best if you can, I didn't feel like getting my KitchenAid out. Um, the dough hook, that is your best bet with this. Um, but I'm just gonna try to do it in a food processor Let's see how that works okay so in the food processor I'm gonna put three and a half cups of whole wheat flour uh, the a traditional recipe calls for regular white you want to reserve some of the flour also for tomorrow for when you're or in a couple hours when you're rolling it out two tablespoons of melted butter, some salt, about a tablespoon of vanilla. I'm using organic coconut sugar. It is going to make it a little bit darker, so feel free to use regular sugar if you want to keep it a light colored beignet, like the traditional ones. So that's a fourth of a cup. Okay, I'm gonna add a fourth of a cup. I'm using egg whites. Feel free to use two medium-sized eggs. And I am using fat-free evaporated milk, but you're gonna need a half a cup of that. Okay, 
And then the last thing we're going to add is this yeast mixture. And then just give it a, you want to try to get it, if you're using, especially if you're using a KitchenAid, you want to try to form it into a bowl. Wow. That didn't take long at all. I actually have a, a dough setting on my food processor. So there's what you want. It's a, turned into a ball. Okay, so what you want to do is um, take a bowl, because it is going to rise, and in that bowl, you want to put just a little bit of flour or oil, uh, just something to kind of make it to where the dough doesn't stick. It actually came out pretty clean. I think the butter helped us out. So I am going to take this and because I'm going to make these tomorrow, going to let it rise in the refrigerator overnight and then um, I'll show you we're going to roll this out and I think this makes about 24 of them so have your air fryer ready to go um, in either two hours if you are just doing this in two to four hours um, let it sit out someplace warm in your house and put you could even um, get a towel uh, with some warm water and put it over top of it um, if not uh, if you do the same thing that I'm doing, leave it in the fridge overnight. You need to let it come up to room temperature before you work with it. So I'll see you after this has risen. Okay, so it is the next day. Um, I let the dough rest in the fridge uh, overnight, and then I pulled it out, I think, two hours ago. So it didn't it didn't fluff up a lot, but it, it is bigger than it was. So what I'm going to do now is I have some flour on the island. You want just a surface that to work on. I'm going to put a little flour and I'm going to knead it. Just take my hands and kind of roll it. And then I'm going to cut it in half maybe even into four parts and let it rest again for about 10 minutes. So you want to just have a little flour on your hands. Get in there and just kind of work it with your palms. I'm going to cut it in half so I can work with it. Actually, I'm going to cut it into four pieces, four equal pieces. That way I can roll it out and work in batches. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and roll one of the pieces out. I did put a little flour on the rolling pin too. So I've let the dough rest and you don't want to have too much flour on it. The flour was just kind of to keep it uh, to where it doesn't stick. So I'm just going to kind of cut these into little rectangles.
something else that I want to do while these are cooking, while these are air frying. Um, I have a container that seals, it's dry, and I have some powdered sugar in here. So when these come out and they're done and crispy, I'm going to throw a few in here, put the lid on and shake them. Another dipping sauce, I just have some semi-sweet chocolate and I put a little coffee in there. So I'm just gonna melt that in the microwave. So I just needed to microwave it for a second. You just want to uh, get the chocolate melted. This is gonna be a dipping sauce. So you just want this consistency where it's just kinda, so don't put too much water in it. And it only microwaves for a few seconds. So the third dipping sauce, I have some fresh raspberries. And I'm gonna put just a pinch of coconut sugar and I have a touch of water and I'm just going to mash it up. You could put this in your food processor. You could put it in your blender. Um, I'm just trying to do it quickly where I have like a, just want to stir it up a little, almost like a, a loose jelly. And that's that dipping sauce. So I've got chocolate, raspberry and the powdered sugar. So I need to get cutting the rest of these. Okay, they actually went for about six minutes. Now the only thing I would suggest, I tried one of them. They're really good, the texture's nice. They're not real sweet. Um, I would definitely add a lot more sugar. Now we are gonna zhuzh them up with some, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put a couple of these while they're warm, and maybe three of them in the powdered sugar. And you just wanna, So they're gonna turn out kind of like donuts. Okay, so we've got the powdered sugar. Have a little bit of the chocolate dipping sauce and a little bit of the raspberry sauce. So there you have the air fryer beignets Raspberry sauce, they're in powdered sugar and chocolate. So I think they look really pretty. Uh, again, just add a little more sugar to the, uh, to the dough uh, when you're mixing it. And I think it would be pretty tasty. And I love that they're air fryer. You don't have to fry, deep, you could actually deep fry these in oil if you really wanted to. But uh, I think I'm gonna coat all of them in powdered sugar and then we can still use the raspberry or you could do strawberry too if you like and the chocolate dipping sauce. I might even do some in cinnamon and sugar. I think that would make them, just think whatever you would have with like a donut type of thing. So I just wanted to tell you, if you ever get a chance to go to Cajun country, um, like in Southern Louisiana, do it. Um, the people there were so welcoming to me and my husband. Um, we, we had, uh, they set up a dinner where we could taste a little bit of um, all of their uh, specialties and the food was amazing and the hospitality was like no other. So if you get a chance to go to Cajun country, do it. You will not be sorry. Good people, good food. Um, and these, uh, keep in mind, these are not traditional recipes. These are just I'm trying to lighten them up. These are my interpretations, the best I can do with not being a Cajun. <laughs> so um, I hope I've inspired you to cook some Cajun recipes and uh, have a great week. I look forward to seeing you again on my channel next week. Take care.